Okay, so what I want to do is, is just go over everything that we've had in, in, in matrices so far. Not quite everything. I'm going to make a couple of assumptions that, um, uh, of things that you know. Uh, but the whole thing about dealing with the operations that, that are permissible, when to use them, and deciding what to do, uh, it, it's a little bit more complicated than the typical algebra problem you've had, where before you would, um, let's say, just say, have you know, an equation to solve, and the technique for solving it, and, and the strategy for solving it is all kind of rolled up into one thing, and you just kind of work through it. Here, what we have is some tools, and you have to make, an, a, make a decision on, on how to use those. So the thing that I'm going to, to assume is that you know how to take a system of equations and make it into a matrix, an augmented matrix. And then conversely, that you know how to take an augmented matrix and make a system of equations out of that. So making those two things, uh, I'm not really going to explicitly talk about. But um, we'll, we'll look at the tools and the strategy of, of, of how, to, um, how to deal with a matrix once we have it formed. So, of course, the first thing that we can do, the simplest thing is swap rows. Uh, we have two other things that we can do. We can multiply a row by a constant. And we do this to make life simpler for us and in some cases avoid fractions and other cases make the um, uh, combination of rows a little easier. And then really the thing that reduces the matrix into a row echelon form is to use this third rule where we're going to multiply um, one of the rows by a constant and add it into another row. So those are the three tools. Everything else um, is, is pretty much off the table. There are things that you do with a matrix that are, are different than what we're talking about here, and, and we're not going to get into any of those, but these are the three things that, with these three tools, any kind of system of three equations, three unknowns that we're going to encounter, we can, we can use to, to find a solution. Okay, so those are the tools, but what are we really trying to do? So I'm going to just call this the strategy. So you have your matrix set up. It's three equations, three unknowns, and so you're going to have four columns, the last column being the um, constants on the other side of the equality sign. And what we want to do with this is that we first want to eliminate the, um, all the entries that are under that first row, first um, uh, column. So in other words, the only coefficient of x that we want is going to be in the first, uh, in the first row, and everything be below that we want to be zeros. And then in the second part, we want to then eliminate the second entry in the third row, which represents the y coefficient in that third, um, uh, in that third equation. We get rid of that, and then from there we just do a back solve. So we'll keep with the, um, the game playing stra uh, uh, terminology here, and I'll call, uh, these are some tactics that you can use to achieve that strategy, okay? So one of the things that um, uh, people often wonder is, what good is swapping rows, what good does that do for you? And what you want to do with swapping the rows is that you can keep your equations in an order so you have that nice row echelon diagonal, so the first um, um, so the first coefficient is there regardless of what else is, is there. So you have the, the row one, um, uh, column one, that there's a real number there, and that there's a real number in the second row, second column, and then a real number in the third row, third column. Now, uh, 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 with the exception of the last one occasionally being zero, you know, you want non-zero values in there. So you can swap rows to make those happen. But one caution here, one caveat is don't just go looking for zeros and start swapping out rows so the zeros are, are not there. Only swap it at the last minute. Like, the first thing you should look at is do you have um, an equation in the first row that has a coefficient that you want to work with? And um, so it's non-zero and, and actually preferably a one. Um, and, and so you can use that to swap that and then do the row reductions to take care of that first column of... Um, of zero, so you get the zero in the second and the third um, rows, and then evaluate, do you need to do a swap between the next two? So kind of my advice here is don't do it too soon. Do it consistent with the strategy of, of, of making those, um, uh, uh, those zeros in the lower triangle, but keeping the diagonal um, uh, non-zero. And then uh, you can do most of these uh, 
uh, eliminations in just three steps. But the math gets kind of complicated because when you have coefficients that aren't really cooperating with each other, if for lack of a better word, um, you can start in, um, introducing fractions. And so you can use that second um, tool where you can multiply a row. Um, you can do that to avoid constant. Uh, um, uh, you can do that to avoid fractions. Now, ultimately, your answer may be fractional. You might have you know z equals one third or something of that sort, and and that will show up at the at the very end. But it's possible at least to keep um, integer um, uh, coefficients um, uh, as you're doing the reduction, and then you know make your fractions at the very end, and that would be computationally a little simpler. So, so the one example that I have here, um, I'll use all of those kinds of um, uh, little points to solve this system here. All right, so we'll, first step, of course, is making this into a, um, uh, into a matrix. Now, when I examine this, I have that zero in the first row, first column. Now, strictly speaking, I, I would be able to solve this by using the row operations, um, other than the row swap, but the easiest one here and the one that should be really obvious to you is to swap the second and the first row. Okay, so when we trade those two like that, we get this, um, now, this matrix that already the first um, coefficient or the first um, entry in the second row is a zero, which is what you want. The first one is a one, which, is, which makes eliminating that three in the third row um, pretty easy then. So feel free to adjust the rows any way you want. There's nothing that says that they have to be in the order that they're presented to you. Uh, we're talking about three equations, and the, th the equations are complete statements in their own right. So the order of them it really, doesn't, really doesn't matter. And in fact, when you're creating a system of, of equations out of, um, let's say, a, a case that you're trying to solve, a word problem or so, you'll see that you're going to form those, um, those equations on their own and, and, and they're not really going to relate, you know, this one has to be first or second or third. So put them in the order that makes it easy for you. And now the thing that we want to do is we want to take care of that three in the third row. And so we're going to take three negative three times the first row and we're going to add it to the third row. So my notation here, the capital R means I'm using the rows, the negative three means I'm multiplying um, the first row by negative three and adding it to row three, and I put it on the level of that row three to indicate that that's where that solution is going. Okay, so when I do this operation, uh, the first thing I do is I take negative three times one is negative three, add it to um, this three here, and then you get zero, so that's that first entry. The second one, I'm going to multiply negative three times uh, one and add it to negative five, and so my second entry on the on that third row is negative eight. Then I'm going to take um, negative three times negative one, and that's three. Add it to negative one, and so I get the two over here. And then for the last one, I get negative three times four um, is twelve, and add it to two, and I get negative ten. So I'm there. I, I've accomplished my my first task, which was to eliminate the um, uh, the non-zero entries in the first column with the exception of the very very first row. Okay, so now the next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of that negative 8, right? Because that's the next thing I want to do. And once, once I have that negative 8 to be a 0, then I'll have that nice diagonal that makes it a row echelon form. But 3 and 8 don't really work together that well, right? I mean, if I wanted to do this brute force, what I would do is I'd say, Okay, I'm going to take um, 8 thirds of row 2 and add it to the last row. So I get 8 thirds times 3, and that makes 8, and 8 plus negative 8 equals 0, so that works. That always comes out to 0, because that's why you choose that, that, um, that multiplier. But then the second one, what I get <coughs> is, oh, I get 8 thirds times 1 plus 2. Well, that, that's where the math starts to get a little bit unwieldy. You certainly can do that if you're, if you're good with it. But um, what I would do here to keep my integers in place is I would say, okay, first thing I notice is that that third row is all even, all right? And if I divide by 2, by a negative 2, I'll get rid of uh, um, 
So I'll reduce the size of all those numbers. Instead of negative 8, 2, and negative 10, I have 4, negative 1, and 5. So this is purely optional here, but, but always when you're making, dealing with smaller numbers, I find that you, you, you make fewer mistakes. Okay? So at the expense of writing one more matrix, we, we have now smaller numbers. Always a good thing. So then what I'm going to say is, okay, that 3 and that 4 don't look like they're going to cooperate very well anymore. So what, what I want to do is I want to multiply both 3 and 4, rows 2 and 3 by 4 and 3, one of them negative. So when I add the two rows together, which will be simplest, um, that, um, where, that entry where the 4 is now and where the negative 8 was before will be 0. So I'm going to say, okay... I'm going to take 4 times 3 will be 12, and negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. So if I just multiply those rows through, I get this matrix that has a 12 and a negative 12 here. And now this is going to look very attractive um, because now the math is very simple. I don't have to keep any intermediate results. All I do is I add those two rows together, and so I get, I get this. So second row starts with a 12, 12, 4, 8. Third row starts with a 7, and so I get 7 and negative 7. And from here, you can do the back solve. Nothing wrong with it if you just decide, I got my row echelon form, I do the back solve. But you can actually make life a little bit simpler for you yourself again by examining those last two rows and making that second row go from a 3, 1, 2 to a 12, 4, 8. Can you slow down for a second? Yeah. I'm still to Okay. That's all right. I know I can get wound up and talking fast, so. Yeah, it seems like you're going like faster. I get really wound up, right? It's faster and faster. Did you see that one YouTube where the guy's rapping really fast? Did you see that? Do you know what I'm talking about? Probably. It's the white dude, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's something wrong about a white dude rapping, I suppose, but um, he was pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. You kind of wonder if he has a life outside of that, because that must take a lot of practice, right? Okay. So we're good now, okay? All right. So where I was, was we have, um, uh, oops, that's not what I wanted, up here. I made this, these two rows, to have these entries of 12 and negative 12 to keep this equation really simple, and so I have this, okay? So... Now, I made this row 12, 4, and 8 from this row of 3, 1, 2 just to make that math easier on that second one. So there's, there's really nothing that says I can't go back to what I originally was because then I'll have smaller numbers when I'm doing the back solve. Same thing with the 7 and the negative 7. You can see that 7z equals negative 7, so z equals negative 1. But since I'm multiplying things, um, rows, I can just say, I'm going to take one-fourth of row two, one-seventh of row three, and so I get that row echelon form. Now, when you put it in, in row echelon form, they're not, you don't end up with a unique solution at this point. So the last two matrices, you know, this one here and this one, we can do the back solve on both of them. It doesn't have to be in lowest terms, but... The advantage of putting it in lowest terms is you get smaller numbers, and so the smaller numbers helps. Yes? Can you just take, uh, so you got 0, 0, 7, negative 7, that one major C, and just do z, uh, 7z equals negative 7, just yeah. start solving that? You can just solve right there, okay. and do the back solve right from there if you choose. Yeah, okay? that'd be easier. Yeah, that might be easier just to stop here, and then what you have is 12y plus 4z equals 8, but since I already knew that I've, I've, I got there by multiplying by 4, if I divide by 4, I'll end up with a simpler equation. Okay. So you don't have to do these that you're multiplying the entire row by, by a constant or dividing by a constant. In my estimation, the reason why you would do it is to make the math simpler. Okay? If you're, uh, certainly, if you're developing a computer algorithm to do this, you don't really care if the computer has to work hard, so you wouldn't necessarily make these steps there. You'd do it in three steps. But, but here we do it just to make it computationally easier. So I do my back solve. Z equals negative 1. 3Y plus Z equals 2. So 3Y minus 1 is 2. And I get my Y equals 1. 
and then x plus 1 minus a negative 1 is 4, so then when I solve that, I get x equals 2. And, of course, then my solution then is 2, 1, and negative 1. Okay, so these are nice round integers, and you have integers for your coefficients in your first equations and things, so it's probably worthwhile checking to see if the answer is correct. So if you say 3y plus z equals 2, that's 3 times 1 minus 1 will be 2. That first one works. The second one would be 2 plus 1 minus a negative 1. That's 2 plus 1 is 3 minus a negative 1 makes 4, so that works. And then 3 times 2 is 6 minus 5 is 1 minus a negative 1 makes 2, so, that, so you, it checks out. So you don't have to go through an elaborate, you know, write it all out or, and everything. Now it's possible that one of the that you have a wrong answer and that one of the equations works, but the but one or or two of them don't work. So if you're going to check your answer, you know you can check one just to make sure check one of the equations to make sure it's sane, but you haven't really proven to yourself that the solution is absolutely correct. It's just um, it's just a solution for that one equation, but you want all of these to be true at the same time. So um, if, if checking is important, and it usually is important, um, you know, uh, check all three equations. So that's, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven matrices that, that, I've, um, that I've written down. And especially for those of you that don't like writing a lot of math, that, that would seem uh, pretty tedious. But I've taken very small steps on, on each of those. And, and so it's... It, I think it's a little bit more reliable than if I would have introduced fractions, let's say, on that third one where I have that 3 and negative 8 where I'm multiplying the second row by 8 thirds to, um, to get, you know, a new row 3. I would certainly get there in fewer steps, but it may be just harder to, um, uh, uh, to keep all the math straight, or you might have to make side notes and things. Well, here all I'm doing was I was really probably that first step where I have negative 3 times row 1 plus row 3 is probably the, the most complicated step that I had there. Everything else was, was fairly simple arithmetic. Now, obviously, when you get real-world equations, the real-world equations aren't going to behave really nicely. They're going to be, you know, fractions and, you know, decimals and things of that sort. So you would, you know, have to kind of brute force go through it with... Um, with some of these not so tidy um, coefficients, but still the process is the same. Okay, all right, so that's what I got for now.